deleting duplicates from any data structure is a very common scenario and a very practical problem that you will encounter in your day-to-day -day problem solving. It is also asked in a lot of coding interviews. You have a similar problem on HackerRank, where you are given a sorted linked list with some duplicates and you have to return a new linked list with all of these duplicates removed. If you want a quick solution and just want to see the code, refer to the link in the description below to my GitHub profile. However, if you want to see how I came up with the solution, stick with me a little longer. Hello friends, welcome back to Study Algorithms, a place where I simplify programming for you with fun and easy to learn examples. First, I will explain you the problem statement and show you a sample test case. Next, we will try to solve the problem using a brute force approach and see what limitations you might come across. Going forward, we will try to find an efficient solution to the problem followed by a dry run of the code. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us try to understand the problem statement first. However, if you are new to linked lists, I would recommend you to go over my introductory video on linked list first. In this problem, you are given an input linked list that is sorted and it has some duplicate elements. So, if you see our linked list, we have the element 1, then we have the element 2 which is repeated, next we have the element 3, and once again you have the element 4 which is repeated again. Note that this list is sorted, so all of these repeating elements would occur one after the other, right? Now, what you need to do is, you need to return me a new list that does not have any duplicates. That means all the duplicates should exist only once. So, in my output list, I have the element 1, then 2, which is repeated only once, then 3, and then the element 4, and then ultimately null. So, you can see that the size of your linked list could change. If no elements are repeated, then the size of your output linked list would be the same, right? However, if you have a case something like this, In this case, you can see that the element 3 is repeated throughout. So, as per your output, you would have only one node. And this single node would be your answer. Now, if you have understood the problem statement correctly, feel free to try it out on your own. However, if you are still facing difficulties, let us dive into the solution. A good developer always tries to come up with a brute force solution first. That is because a brute force solution can guarantee you if a solution to a problem even exists. So let us say you are given with this sample linked list and you have to remove duplicates from it. You can see that the element 2 is duplicated over here and the element 4 is duplicated over here. You need to find a way that in your output list you do not have any duplicates. So, what you can think of? One way you can start to approach this problem is by using a set data structure. The speciality of a set is that it will only have unique elements. So, what you can do is you can start iterating over this linked list and keep on adding all of these elements to a new set. This new set will have only unique elements. Let me show you what I mean. So, starting with the first element, I create my set. I add the element 1. Next, I see the element 2, right? This does not exist in the set. So, I add the element 2. Then, I see the element 2 again. This exists in the set. So, we won't be doing anything. Once again, we see the element 2. This still exists in the set. So, we just move ahead. Going forward, we see the element 3. This does not exist in my set and hence 3 would be added to my set. Going forward, I see the element 4 and I add it to my set. Then you have a 4 again. This is duplicated, so it won't be added to the set. And ultimately we have the element 5. So this completes my set of all the unique elements, right? As a final step, what you need to just do is use the elements of this set to create a new list. So once I create a new list, this would look something like
So you see, in our output list, we have removed all the duplicates. Now, this method works perfectly and it will give you the correct solution. But do you see the problem with this method? If your linked list is very large, then it could be a case that you are creating an extra set of the same space. So let us say you have a linked list of a thousand elements. Then there could be a case that you are creating a set of 800 elements. So in a way, you are wasting a lot of space. So the space complexity of this solution turns out to be order of n. And if you notice, we never take any advantage of the fact that this is a linked list and it is also sorted. To find an efficient solution, let us try to take advantage of this fact. How does that look? Let us have a look. To come up with an efficient solution to this problem, you need to take advantage of two facts. Number one, that this is a linked list. And in a linked list, you can modify the pointers as per your wish, right? Number two, you need to take advantage of the fact that this list is already sorted. That means that any of the duplicates that exist in the list, they would always be adjacent to each other, right? So keeping these two facts in mind, we can come up with an efficient solution that can save us space and time as well. I start off with my head value that is 1. Good, right? Next, what I will do is I will check my next value. I see that my next value is 2. That is different from my previous value, right? So, good enough. I will advance my pointer one step ahead. Now I am at position number 2. Once again, we will check the next position. I see that the next element 2, it is repeated. We do not want to include that in a final list, right? So just skip this for a while. Move to the next pointer again. I see 2 again, which is pointing to my original value, right? And this value also matches. So we will skip this value again. I go on to my next value and I see the value 3. Now this value is different from the value that I am pointing to, right? So here we take advantage of the fact that this is a linked list. I will remove this pointer. What I will do is, I will start a new pointer that starts from 2 and the next points at 3. So you see, we have skipped some elements. Now 2 is taken care of. That means I can advance my pointer to the next value. Now I am pointing at 3. I once again check the next value and this value is 4, right? This is different from 3. That means once again I can advance my pointer. I am now pointing at 4. Check the next value again. What is it? The next value is 4. And it matches my original pointer, correct? Hence, we do not need to take it into consideration. We can simply skip to the next value. The next value I see is 5. Now 5 is different from the value that I am pointing to. So once again I need to take advantage of linked list. So I remove the next pointer from the node I am pointing to and I create a new link. And now I can move my pointer to the value 5. The next of 5 is null and hence we need to stop now. Do you now feel that we have arrived at the solution? Let us have a look and we will try to iterate the list from the starting position. So starting from the head, I see the value 1, right? Next, I go on to my value 2. Now when I will do a next, I will go on to this path and I will see the value 3. Next, I see the value 4 and once again if I go on to my next path, I will see the value 5 and then ultimately none. So what just happened over here? We didn't actually delete the values, but the list we are returning has the pointers such that all the duplicates are now removed. So now, if someone will try to iterate over this list, they will get the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And hence, you see, we were able to remove all the duplicates from this sorted linked list. Now, let us do a dry run of the code and see how this works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, we have a sample input test case that we will try to solve. 
So we pass in the head pointer as a parameter to the function. Now this head pointer represents the entire linked list, right? Next, what you do is you create a priv pointer that is pointing to head. So priv pointer would point to head, and over here we will see how priv actually looks like and what happens over here. So right now priv is pointing at head and it has the value 1 in it, right? Going forward, we also create a temporary variable and we point it to priv.next. So that means temp is pointing at 2. Next, you run a while loop. Now, this while loop will run until we are at the end of the linked list, correct? Do you remember how we were checking if it's a duplicate or not? We were comparing it to the previous value and hence we called our pointer priv. So what you do is you check if the value of temp is equal to the value of the previous node. Right now 1 is not equal to 2. That means what you simply do is you do a previous dot next equals to temp. That means I will create a next node to the previous and that will point to 2, right? So it has 2 in it. In the next step, we point previous to the next node, that is our temporary variable, and we move temp to our next value. So now temp will point at this next 2. This while loop will run again. This time we check if temp.value equals previous.value. You see that previous is pointing at 2 and temp is also pointing at 2. That means this is a duplicate and hence we just need to move ahead. We don't have to do anything about it. So I move my temp pointer one step ahead and I do a continue. This while loop will run again and this time my temp is pointing at the value 3. I check if temp.value is equal to previous.value. No, right? That means we go over to our else section. Now we say that previous.next equals to temp. What this will do is previous.next will point to our new value that is temp. So you can see how previous is forming a new list that is without duplicates. Once again we say previous equals to temp. So this will move the previous pointer to the next value and once again we move the temp to a new value and temp now moves to 4. This while loop runs again and this time we will add the value 4 to our list. In one more iteration what will happen is we will again move our temp value to the next pointer and previous will also point at 4. That means we are again encountering a duplicate. We will again do a continue statement and this loop will eventually end. So now we have reached the end of the linked list. Just as a sanitary measure what we will do is we will mark the next of previous pointer to null such that if someone is traversing from the starting of the linked list they know that we have now reached the end of the list. Once all of this is done we will just return the head pointer. Do note that although you are returning the head pointer but what we have actually done is we have modified these original pointers. So this pointer will now change and it will point to 3 and this pointer will now change and it will point to null. So if someone will try to traverse the list they will go like 1, 2, then 3, then 4 and then ultimately null. The time complexity of this solution is order of n and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1. That is because we do not create any new data structure, we are just modifying the actual pointers of the linked list. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, take a moment to think about the solution that we came up with. We are modifying our actual list in this solution, right? Always read the problem statement very carefully. There could be a case where you have to retain your original list. Even your interviewer could ask it. In that case, we will have to create a new list with the duplicate elements removed. It can be done with just a little tweak in the code we just discussed. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and how you can come up with such a solution. 
I would be glad to help you out in finding a good solution to this problem. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this problem is available on the website studyalgorithms.com. Do remember to check out this website if you still have doubts at the end of this video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming concepts for you. Also let me know what problem do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya!